Welcome back to Off Grid Living and Survival Prep here, folks. You know what we're doing today? You know exactly what we're doing today because you saw the thumbnail and you were like, oh, we got to check this out. We are bah! eating worms. Stay tuned. Welcome back, folks. Davey here with Off-Grid Living and Survival Prep. See it on my chest in reverse. But anyway, we're here today because we're going to do something. It's just I've been waiting to do this video for so long. It's finally time. Things are slowing down. Time to make some really cool content here in the fall. So, obviously, you know this video is about eating worms, earthworms, earthworms, sandworms in Asian culture, beetles bugs insects of all sorts are used in a lot of different cultures as part of their normal cuisine cuisine their daily cuisine um their protein i mean we're very rich in canada with various types and styles of protein we get almost anything that's on this planet um but something that we overlook um and that other cultures have mastered is the art of eating earthworms sandworms beetles insects critters leeches whatever um, I keep it in my arsenal. I did a lot of research on this when I first started eating worms. I know that, <laughs> I know that sounds funny, but there's a right and a wrong way to do everything. Okay. And when I did my research years ago on eating worms before I started to eat them, I had my doubts and I watched a lot of videos on on guys and women i watched a video on a woman on youtube and oh she was taking handfuls of earthworms she was frying them in a wok and eating them and i just about puked i honestly i just about i was like can't do it so i started to dive a little deeper into the cuisine of it and how actual chefs prepare things like earthworms uh for consumption there's 70 percent protein jam-packed full of protein an excellent survival food because in a lot of climates, in a lot of areas, you'll find earthworms, you know? And when I was going on the show, Chefs vs. Wild, I had that in the back of my mind. I'm like, I am going to find a pile of earthworms and we're going to eat them up and it's going to be great footage and maybe he'll even use them in his final cook-off. I get out there and I realize that it's about a foot of completely wet, saturated moss in the rainforest. And uh, on sitting on top of rock, there was no earthworms at all. The other team found some beetles. I thought that was cool. He put it in his pasta. It was amazing. Um, but I really wanted to do it. But I finally, I get to do it here on my own, um, in my own element with YouTube. So you can just take worms. Hey, you can just take worms, you know, and slurp them down. You can. You can eat them. The problem with that is, is that if you're relying on a survival food, these are tiny little earthworms that I just found under my wood pile. But if you're relying on this in a survival situation and you have to eat a lot of them, the thing that I don't like about chewing them down raw is that they could be exposed to giardi, which can give you beaver fever, which can kill you. It can dehydrate you if you get the scoots or you start puking. Um, they're living in coliforms. Uh, they could be living in a coli. They could be leaving, living in feces, depending on where they are and what they're navigating through. Earthworms eat earth. That's what they do. They pull minerals out of the earth they're eating, and that sustains them and keeps them alive. And But there's still that susceptibility to a coli and coliforms, which are natural biodegrade of leaves and um, different forestation drop. And then, obviously, Giardi, beaver fever. You don't want to get any of those things when you're out in the middle of nowhere relying on a food source. So 
if you have to, and I'm in no way, I'm not a botanist by any means. All I do is I trust in what I do and that it's kept me alive and I've got no long-term um, microbiological infestation in my body. So this is how I do it. Um, from all the research I've done, from trusted botanists on how to consume them and chefs, food professionals, I follow them and because they're the pros. So I'm just sharing what I've gathered, how I eat it, I use it. In a survival situation, you're probably going to be able to find earthworms somewhere, depending on your area. Um, we have an abundance here. You can just put a shovel in the ground, or if, you have, if you're in a survival situation, put a stick in the ground, pull the earth up, and you're going to find worms. You're going to find a massive amount of protein in these worms, and it's going to keep you alive. It's going to be something to keep you alive if you have to, and it takes very little energy to find them so it's not like hunting or building traps uh stuff like that it's very very you just got to get on your hands and knees pull some dirt up find them the preparation is very easy for consumption as well so to me when i factor all that stuff in to me it's a win 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 eating earthworms is a wicked survival food if you had to but i'm not going to eat them raw if i don't have to if i have a fire going and i can get a fire going that means i can get into my process so let's get into the process of what I do after you harvest your worms. Let's get into the process of what I do to consume them. And I really, I do apologize if this offends anybody. Um, if you believe like um, animal rights activists and all that stuff, uh, I'm very sorry. But if you're ever in a survival situation yourself, um, you're going to wish that you had this uh, knowledge in your survival toolbox to maybe pull you and your family out of a jam. So definitely not affecting the population in this area. And in my opinion, it's no different than going out and shooting something in the bush and eating it or um, going to the grocery store and eating an animal that you've killed. So let's get into it. I'm gonna show you how I prep these up. I'm on the back edge of my property here and I'm just going to simply stick my shovel in the ground You're in a survival situation, obviously you can use a stick, whatever you had to dig the earth up. Flip it over. And already I got a big juicy one. And I know the other ones are here hiding. They always hide. So there. So for video's sake, I'm not gonna uh, do a whole bunch. There's no point. Um, I'm not in a survival situation. But I have three nice ones that we're going to go get prepped up. So next stage is, like we have our worms in here. We're just going to take as much dirt off as we can. Just shake it off, you know. Now what I like to do, what I've been taught to do, is find something that's edible to humans. So right away I look over here and I have a ton of clover. A ton of red clover. Just growing naturally. So what I'm going to do because I know that I can consume this safely, just take it in my hand and eat it. Take it, throw it in your bowl. Find a bunch of stuff that's edible to yourself, whether it's dandelions, berries, whatever you can find, whatever's gonna be edible to you as a human in your foraging textbook, go and find it. And put that in with your worms. So what's gonna happen is the worms, over the next 10 hours, I usually wait about 10 or 12 hours, are gonna eat and consume what you're putting in that bowl. They're gonna chew on it, it's gonna go into their system. So now their whole digestive system is full of stuff that you can eat. So basically what you're doing is extracting whatever's in their body and replacing it with what you know you can eat as a human. It's an extra step, you don't have to do it. I do it because peace of mind, especially when you're in the bush. Okay, next step, we're close. All right, guys and gals, so 10 or 12 hours later, which I had some ready, so you can take your worms, which have digested the clover, which we can eat, take that, and all I have here is a little bowl of water, clean water. Take your worms, plunk them in the water. 
just to clean them off, just to clean the stuff off. They're gonna swim around, do their thing, okay? Try to clean off any clover that you have or dirt. So they're in here, they're swimming. They're swimming, swimming. Now what I like to do, you can always tell the head's gonna be a little bit pinker, but you can literally, they're transparent, right? So you can look through the worm and you can see what it has in its system, okay? It's full. So what I do, take my worm and I'll squeeze the head. and evacuate the anus. I hope you saw that. Just watch. See, it ripped in half because it's this tiny worm, but that's all poop. That's all poop coming out. So we've evacuated that worm of as much of the fecal bacteria, which it's not really fecal bacteria, it's just dirt. But we're taking every precaution possible, right? So grab the head. The head's always the big pink part with the little white ring behind it. Take it. See that? That's everything that was in its tummy. It's out. Do it again. You can feel it coming out, all out. In the pot she goes, boys. We have two prepared worms, all right? They're as clean as we can get them. Got the dirt off them. We've evacuated their, we've evacuated their digestive system. So now we're on to the next stage. So I don't know if you can see this, but I've got a pot of uh, boiling water on the go here. Take your worms that you've cleaned, put them in. I'm gonna boil those worms up for about five minutes. So if you had a big handful, you just boil them, boil them, boil them, they're gonna die I'm dead already. And all you're doing is like you would boil your water if you got it from a creek. You're just sterilizing whatever is in that, uh, in that worm um, and ensuring that it's, it's gonna be safe for you to consume. So in the pot they go, they're floating up and uh, they're getting ready for the boil. Almost at the eating time. Ooh, I just love them. Ooh, it's so tasty. So yeah, now I just take it after I've boiled it. That's a boiled worm. And obviously if they're bigger, you can wrap them around a couple of times, you know, or you could put a slit in your stick. I'm just gonna go, she dropped it. I'm just gonna put it on my stick like this and roast it. Just like roasting hot dogs. I'm just gonna roast it over the flames. I don't wanna start a forest fire or else I would've had a fire. But obviously if you're in the bush, you're gonna have a fire going, I would hope. As a survival food and being able to trust this as a, a really reliable source of protein, um, to me, it is like, it's hands down. It's so easy to get. It's so easy to acquire. You have yourself a beautiful purged cooked tastes like grass because it was eating grass, eating clover. Chew it real good. And send her home. So there you have it, folks. That's how, if you're ever in a survival situation and you have to consume worms, it's a bit of sand, a dirt in that one. If you have to consume worms, um, that's your best way. In my, in my opinion, that's the best way. So take them, harvest them, um, clean them off, 
put them in a container or in your hand or make a little bowl or something out of clay if you had to um, and then put them in there with some edible stuff that you know is edible and let them chew on that for 10 12 hours if you want to um, I would really recommend you do that and that fills their intestines up with good reliable stuff and then purge out the intestines um, rinse it off again boil it five minute rolling boil put it on a stick over your fire roast it up like I said if you can't boil it, roast it over the fire. Just put it on a stick, rig yourself something up, something up to, to put them on, and then roast them. 70% protein, and it's going to keep you alive. It's going to keep your energy up. It's going to keep your mental state your mental state up. And uh, in all reality, they don't taste that bad. They just they taste like dirt. Like if you're shoveling and some dirt gets in your mouth, that's what it tastes like. But that ensures that you're going to have a safe um a safe meal and uh keep yourself alive very easy to harvest so i hope you enjoyed the video we're at a thousand subscribers plus now like 1150 i just got to get my watch hours up which are increasing uh daily it's, it's really awesome it's really exciting to see the channel grow so i really hope you enjoyed uh the video and i really hope you enjoyed the content we got lots more cool stuff coming um got a lot of good ideas for especially survival stuff getting into the fall when people are getting out in the bush and uh, this is when a lot of people die uh, when a lot of people die in the woods um, they go in ill prepared and uh, they just don't have that knowledge but this simple stuff this simple simple way of harvesting is a really 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 smart and safe way to keep yourself alive if something happens so Happy hunting season. Be safe out there. Take what you need in a bag in the bush. Make sure your day bag's got everything you need. Because um, we all know how easy it is to get lost and turned around and start making bad decisions. But I hope if you can add this to your arsenal of uh, survival tools, then uh, just want to kiss. Then I hope it's really helpful to you. So thanks a lot for tuning in. Please hit that subscribe button, like, share it with your buds. And uh, like I said, we'll have lots more stuff coming soon. From Northern Ontario, Canada, this is Dave signing out and Elmer. Bye for now.